welcome back to the YTG podcast. If welcome. you are new here, my name is Nico. I'm an automotive photographer and now amateur racing driver. I'm Sean and I am the owner of this lovely shed in Keysborough. YTG Young Timers Garage. Here Welcome. on the the weekly ish YTG podcast, we're yes. going to give you the sort of inside scoop inside the automotive industry in Australia, as well as some fantastic stories, mm-hmm. motorsport, anything car, car related. related. So and a bit of electric car hate. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, join us on another episode, and we hope you enjoy. Welcome back. We've been gone for a while, a while, a little over a month because Tristan. Easy. Tristan, our main man, who it must be said, brings a portable broadcasting studio here yes. for us, was away doing some some big jobs over in South Australia. So, But we're back. We're back. We're back. It's all on. And and I haven't uh, been on for ages because then you had Ben was on last time. Yeah. Oh, geez. That was a while ago, wasn't so it? So it's been a while since you and I had done one. It, yes, it has been It has ages. been a lot's happened. A lot <laughs> yeah. to get through. So, so much to talk about. Lovely to see you all and hope you enjoy. Yeah. So you join oh, yeah. us. Yeah. What? Oh, here we go. I'm not a part of this. <laughs> Go! Go, Trump. <laughs> Make America great. I do love the Band-Aid on the hat. The yeah, ban- for, 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 for the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's a um, nice touch. Yeah, not political, but everyone knows I'm a Trump supporter. If you don't know, uh, you now you know. And if you don't like it, well, tough shit. That's me. <laughs> I don't... Don't hold that against me. I'm a Trump supporter. If you don't like me, that means you probably voted for that fuck with Daniel Andrews. So we definitely uh, have nothing in common. So, yeah, go Trump. Fucking make America great. And Vance fucking, yeah, fucking wrapped. There you go. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Back to things with four wheels. <laughs> go. I love it. Oh, right there on the table. Go. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's go. So, so yes. You join us the day after the Art Neon Art Neon? I, I, just, I heard him pronounce it once and I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm not going to be able to repeat that. Art, Art Neon. Is that it? was it? Fuck the photo. I, I thought it was that. Art the, Neon. It's a, it show of, a Porsche only show in Melbourne for, mm. for those not local to the area and have no idea what we're talking about. Everyone in Melbourne was there. Fantastic show. You can go check credit. out some of the photos on our social media. Brendan, yeah? Uh, Brendan. Yeah, yeah, credit, mate. Well yeah. done. It's great, great, great event. Fantastic. Love event. to be involved if we can next year as well. So please. Yeah. As I said to them, it was great, great event. Yeah. So we had the RSR mm. on display there. Yeah, got um, some interest from that. Which is, yeah, what a car. Which is a bit of bizarre. Has, has, curious, I had all the confidence in the world we got that car in. But I suppose at the end of the day, I guess the way the markets and the way things are at the moment, it is an expenditure, I guess, because it is just a race car at the end of the day, yeah. which we always knew that, regardless yeah. of what it was spent. It was ridiculous. But it was just one of those things that you never know. But look, we were just surprised. And yeah, we got some people from that, definitely. So awesome. look, see. But it was, it was a great range of cars wasn't it really was yeah, Great yeah, diversity. yeah absolutely everything hello to there. everyone that we made fuck we ran into so many people. It was unreal it was mm. great because we haven't really don't really get out too much i don't really we go don't get to out too much don't yeah. go it was like bosch i went to bosch said hello to everyone thank you again one thing i feel really feel very humbled by um and i think you 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 got it the other day too is i sort of get out and about for more of the car things and that i just want to say thank you to the kind people that sort of come and say hey man i love your podcast oh. or it's been, you know, hey, look, it's it's very humbling and and, and and very satisfying to know that what we what we talk about or the cars and such things like that. It's just yeah, it just sort of uh, vibes with people and, and we appreciate it. So yeah, thank you. It was really very yeah. kind of you. The the many of you that have come up and said, hey man, I love your podcast. As you know, I probably usually say, don't hold that against me. But to <laughs> that, you nine out of ten usually say, no nah, man, fuck it, we love it because it's real and it's raw and. We've been doing it a long time, so we've got a lot of experience. So, yeah, we call it as we say it. But, yeah, no, it was good. It was good. So, thank you. I just want a little thank you to all the people that we run into. Even at Art Nouveau, the, the Porsche thing, it was great. Even Sandown, we after, went to Sandown after that. Oh, the classic Yeah, it was yeah. just great. Yeah, Which yeah. looked like that was another awesome Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was a good day. Yeah. A lot of good cars. Again, a lot of great clients. Yeah. A lot of epic old cars. So, yeah, great. It was a good day. Yeah, g'day to my new mate off uh, Facebook Marketplace. He got the shock of his life when I rocked up to yeah. pick someone up. Uh, yeah. He opens the door and I'm opening the boot of my car and I turn around. I'm like, here for the simulator? And he's just standing in the door. He's like, You're from that podcast. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, too, brother. Very good. too good. Very good. So can it's very you, kind of you. Can you believe that it's been a year since Sam and Tony were here for the scene through glass, cars, and coffee? A whole year. I mean, this year has been such a blur. It's had. We've been blessed. We've had a lot of highs, a few lows, like anything. 
few just fucking scratching your head. But all in all, you know, we just want to finish up the year strong. But, you know, one thing we haven't continued, obviously, is the cars and coffee. Yeah. And, and like some of us said, you know, November, it's been one year. Yeah. And I can't believe it. And that Crazy. Mean, it was epic. I mean, again, we were just talking about this the other day. I mean, the numbers council it was like around about almost 3,000 people so I don't know I don't know I think whether they were having that up but Fred left reckons it was easy to close to 2,000 easy the amount of coffees and everything they served it was just out of control they had not nine people on it was hectic they have generally three four at best yeah at best during the week so yeah it was a great yeah I can't believe one year fuck ages <sighs> time's flying Time is flying. We've done a lot this year. Fuck, yeah. there's a lot that's happened, eh? Yeah, so we're totally unrelated to Cars and Coffee News. Mm. We will be opening our doors again on a Sunday morning yes. very soon for you to potentially come and partake in a coffee. Yes. And I'm guessing you'll probably arrive in a car. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like what we're going to call it, like an open house. Open house, yeah. yeah. We're Christmas sale, if yeah, you will. Yeah, it's an open house. At the um, end of the day, I am a car dealership. Correct. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there doing sort of Cars and Coffee now, which is great because it's keeping the vibe and the festivals, festivities sort of going. But we're technically one of the few pure car dealerships. There's a lot of them out there which are a bit of everything, but we're sort of more pure dealership than anything. But so we thought, well, why don't we just have – and because we're not open to the public per se, you know, it's always by a, been a by appointment. And, you know, we were talking about this, you know, technically January, we're into our fifth year, mate. You know what Crazy. I mean? Like it's unbelievable how it's yeah. gone. So – this is the first year that we haven't actually done a whole apart from November last year. So yes, the way so, yeah. we way we're looking at it now is yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be it's like a white a, a YTG open house. Yep. Open to the public on open a Open to the public. Morning. You know, Fred will be open for a coffee anyway, so he'll be yeah. open, so you can have a coffee there anyways. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. whip out your calendars, your diaries. It is the fifteenth of December, which is in five weeks. Time yeah, plenty of time. We don't expect to get 1,500, 2,000, 1,000 people. We're not worried about that. It's not about a numbers thing. We just haven't had one for ages and we want to do an open house. A lot of people go, oh, you know, you can open up to the public, whatever. So mm -hmm. we thought, you know what, get some new clients in and get some new people in, haven't seen, who haven't been here for a while. There's a lot of people now on the new car scene that have been asking, you know, are you going to do something like that? So, yeah, so that's what we've, we've worked it out. Nothing seems to be around those dates, and if there are, so be it. It is what it is. Look, it's close um, to Christmas. There's always yeah, going to be some things. Look, but... there's always something on. But look, mate, even if there was 50 people that turned up or 100 people, lovely, mate, we are happy. Yeah, we're not here to compete with anything apart from we are having a proper official YTG open house yep. for the first time this year. Bring your beautiful car. I've got a massive car park. The coffee shop will be open. Come and enjoy the view. You might have something you want to sell. Talk to us. Nice casual morning. Looking forward to it. It'll be good. Exactly all right. Gates open at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Correct. Be there or be square. Be there. Don't or... rock up at 7 like many, many, many people, people do. Many people do. Particularly um, in BMW M2s. But yes. <laughs> anyways. Yeah, we will be here early because obviously we just want to, you know, let people walk around the showroom, so to speak, and have exactly a look around. Right. So we'll just create Mate, some there's space. there's not so... many opportunities for the public to come and view this space, which yeah. continually gets rave yeah. reviews. Yeah, so, so it's we want to finish off the year to thank everyone and to just finish it up and just say hey look we haven't seen you all in a while we see everyone at other events we go to everyone's mm -hmm. been asking so this is our uh, it's not a cars and coffee it's an open house exactly right anyway Correct. we'll move on move because on. we've got so much to heaps yeah, oh fuck yeah heaps. Let's go. what time did we start this so I can track it okay 8.15ish 8, alright a whole bunch of new cars have been launched mm. while we have been not podcasting so I'm going to quickly run through a few and I want your opinions yeah um, first things first, the, the new LaFerrari replacement. No, nah, not interested. Thank you. I totally agree. Not interested. Not interested. I've got not a handful. I've got a couple of clients that have obviously got them. Yep. They're very, very v, 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 VIP clients with Ferrari. So that was just a given. They've already got everything else. Yep. So I knew that they would get them. Whether or not all of them will bring them into Australia is another thing because of our fucking tax system here. Yep. They're ballers enough that they could keep them in Europe. Mm. Do I like it? No. It, I think no. it looks like crap. I think it looks shit. I think it looks like a fucking Lego car. Uh, it does. Brother, I That's think it, it looks is. like a Lego car. I couldn't figure it out. That's um, what it is. It's a V6. Are you serious? <laughs> a V6. Oh, but the hybrid technology. Oh, get over it. 
A V6, they don't can give a shit. Of course they're all sold out. But look how many they made this time. 799 or something or other, or 699? They yeah. made seven, I think it was 799. No, no, I don't, no. I fucking keep my La Ferrari. I keep my Enzo. Oh, yeah. I keep my fucking F50. Yeah, I don't even keep my F40. I mean, even though there's yeah. a million of them. Oh, a million. But, well, oh, I mean, like, 1,300 I mean, of them. No, but I mean, like, the car, personally, again, so we were talking about this the other day. I remember when I was at Dutton's, we knocked one back in 14. I think it was 800. We were trying to buy for 700. Anyways, it was a non-cat, non-adjust, which anyone knows, that's the one to get. Needed fuel cells, which anyone knows, that's not cheap. The weave was good, which everyone knows, anyone knows, that's 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 good because the, the, the shit paint, you could just, yeah. the right factory paint was fucked because you could just see the weave. Yeah. If it's too good, that means it's been restored or it's been here or whatever. Right. Means. Anyways, so I remember, well, look, like, Seven, eight hundred back then. Then I'd sold a couple, 1.8, 2.4, 2.3, that sort of stuff. We got a, I can never say that. We got a, we got a, we, we achieved the result, some that know, no, and others that we can't really say because NDO signed, but we achieved the world world record on a particular one that was sold. As remember that one that we had? Mm -hmm. That was one of four and only one that had never been raced in a very, very special. And yeah, anyways, can't talk too much about it, but that was a world record. Fuck. Unfortunately, it was off the, off the record, so we couldn't. Yeah, it would have been good to have claim it. That would have been pretty special to claim. But anyways, so that's a unicorn. That was a fucking unicorn. That was one of four and the only one not fucking raced uh, with a full Evo 2. Uh, what a special car. Fuck, that was a good <laughs> Moving on from anyway, NDA so, speak. Yeah, so, um, so, so, so now that they're 4.1, 4.2, which is ridiculous. That's jumped. Like, fantastic. That's... Are they over four million? Brother, miles, for a good mileage car, like a good car, like a good mileage car is, look, you know, it's sad because 30, 40,000 Ks seems like a lot. It's not for a car that's 84, Christ. but in saying that, I remember oh. we had we had cars with delivery mileage upstairs, um, but a, a, an average mileage car, uh, it, it made it's fucking four million bucks. I, I, it's unbelievable. I still thought the strength. were one and a half. They were a couple of years ago, oh, five years, five, oh, a bit more, five, seven, eight years ago. But still, four million dollars. Yeah. F fifties and two eighty eights never had the growth that they did, and they've just been so strong. I just think that there's so many people that can relate to that F forty as a. But the F fifty was a bit of an orphan. Enzo was just grouse. You know, I like the La Ferrari. I, I, because I, remember we, we were the only ones who had it. La Ferrari P one right, and, yeah, and and, yeah. and nine one eight. La Ferrari was just, you know, just, yeah, it was just beautiful. But the yeah. 918 was just the fucking shit. It yeah. was just. And you just fun. can't say that about this new Ferrari. It just, I don't it's like it. It's not a beautiful, pretty It's not car. pretty. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's fucking. Did you see how expensive it is? No. It's fucking like. It was three, four million. Three million euro or four million? Oh, no, it was. It was something four million or something. Well, there was an Australian, no, 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 it'd be more. That by the time they landed the bastard with the taxes, Correct. but it was ridiculous. It was like the most, the most of an F one F car, what they call the F series, yep. for our ever be. Anyway, wow. the La Ferrari was one point, I think the one point eight euro or whatever it was yeah, at the time, yeah. and and then the Aperta was obviously a bit more. Enzo, <laughs> you know, fuck F forties were a fucking six hundred thousand back in the day, but you could buy a fucking street for that. But in saying that, that's fucking expensive. But of course they're sold out. Of course they would. Yeah, there's a lot of young money in the market now, and of course, you know they, you know, I don't know, I don't know, not really. So Porsche have unveiled the 992.2 GT3, yeah, which is cool. Yeah, not a whole lot of changes. No, it's it's very similar 992.1. Um, Sometimes you wonder why. I mean, it's Porsche. It's just that slight incremental. Yeah. And you know that half the guys with 992s are going to trade them in for 992.2s because they have to have... But I haven't even fucking put mileage on the ones they've just taken delivery of. It's pretty crazy. That's what yeah. I mean. Like, I thought yeah. it was a bit soon that they'll bring in there. Even a few people were saying, mate, there's only some people have just some people have just taken delivery of their GT3s. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're still a brand new car. Yeah. Mate. We've got three of them on the go. Yeah. All and under, the, all the, under the, the rate at which they're pumping out new models is... Terrifying Mate, me a little come bit. on, man. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing. Anyways. Yeah. Back. So, the two yeah. notable things for me were you can now get back seats in a GT3 Touring. That's grouse. That's awesome. That's grouse. Yeah, I heard about that. I've been that's talking grouse. about that for a long time. Yeah, that's grouse. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. And then secondly. That'll be the most picked. That'll be the one of the most ticked. If you saw the Chris Harris walk around with no. Andreas Proninger, what they have done is. I haven't seen any Chris Harris for ages. I've got to get stuck in. On the, the center screen, they have put 
one button on the home screen which brings up all of your computer aid systems ready to go. In the one spot. So you can very, very Rouse. quickly, quickly and easily bang, go, dig, 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 turn dig, dig, dig. on all turn off yeah, all yeah, yeah. of the stuff which to pass regulations they now have to have. So <coughs> Porsche can't say this, but they've done the right thing by us and made it very easy to turn all of the That's systems smart. off. So Makes it easy. Thank yeah. you, Porsche. So, yeah, hundred percent. That that it is. Instead of going in all the different sub menus yep. and all of those things, which yep. Someone like me, if I, can, I would never be able to do. So that's right. good. Okay, good. Right. Thoughts know. on the McLaren W1? No, nah, that, that was a fucking Same as the Ferrari. Garage. I just, I just got no off. interest. I looked at it and I went, it looked like an MC20. It's a weird looking car. I it's, looked at it and I was like, like the Ferrari. it's just weird. Like, I was like, where is styling going? Like, <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, and again, all <coughs> sold out. I fucking of course. Of course. Hang on. We've got fucking 8 billion people. There's a fucking lot of wealthy people in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, of course they're going to fucking sell out. Yeah. But. Half these people are buying it for the wank factor. When yeah. have a look at what they're costing, mate. There is a lot of fucking amazing supercars that were the pinnacle or the yeah. benchmark, or whatever that you yeah. are now overlooking that you can buy for the same, if not less. That will actually have, I believe, some form of capital appreciation. Still, yeah. there's a big market out there in supercars and hypercar land, and not all of them are fucking grouse. And most people will be buying them as investments. I mean, we were just talking about. They're not, about mate. They're not. Fuck the, off. The amount of guys not. that we've been speaking to directly mate, who are in the GT4 RS market, thinking that they could flip them. You know. Hello. Mm. The only look. I've said this before. The only person who makes money on those cars, the the, the, the GT3 RS, the was the guy that first. fucking picked, made. Was either the first or second on the first five batch that bought them, yeah. that got them, because everyone else is still twelve to eighteen months out, mate, and they flipped them, and they're and the they ones burnt, who made that. They burnt their relationship their, with Porsche yeah, doing their, so. They burnt their relationship with Porsche. Yeah, they made their couple hundred grand and good on them, but they don't give a fuck, and yep. that's the thing. They're the only ones, and everyone else thought <clears> that they were going to do it, mate. <sighs> Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. There's, I don't know many cars at the moment that you can buy new that you're going to get overs for anymore. I think that's really stopped. It's a hard game. It's a very, very hard game at the yeah. moment. It's it almost really luck. Is. Yeah. I, I've heard stories. It's only of... the old school mates that were the ones that were fucking standing strong. Um, sadly, the, you know, that classic period, your 430 Scuds, your 458 Specials, yeah, 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 your Pistas. Yeah. Pista Perda, but that's really where it slows up. Mm. Your GDO 599s. There yeah. I'm talking the prancing horse shit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your Sport Classic and your 911s, you know, the late Mo one. The R will be stable now. They went up and down, went up and down. They never get the fucking 900 and that. But, you know, those are the ones. When you look at that, okay, GD3 RS because of the hype that's around it. But I like no, I'd be happy with that, you know, that we had a you know, 16 GD3 RS here that we sold in Lizard Green that was here. Client was here today. And I was looking at it, and it, it, we delivered it with the satin black wheels, but he put the gold wheels on it. I, love, I, I like the gold love wheels. Love that. I said I love the gold wheels. The gold wheels look good. I mean, yep. you know what, fuck. You know, once this what the new ones come out, that settles down because it sort of kept the strength a bit in a few of these cars. But there's quite a bit of choice on them. I think that's a fantastic car. Like I just think to myself, fuck the money. That just, I don't know, brother. I don't know. I just don't know about this. They bought it out too quick, and the junior throws. Some of the reviews, they, 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 they they're not exactly all that fucking complimentary. Honestly, currently, I reckon a 991 GT3 is a bit of a bargain, considering what the rest of the 3.8 car. Considering yeah. what the rest of the market is currently selling for. I think so. <laughs> I had one on the go. We were trying to trade. I mean, unfortunately, the guy paid big money during the COVID times, as a lot of people have. And that's yeah. the thing. See, a lot of people yeah. uh, really realise they're not, you know, the market was very strong a number of years ago, not a number, a couple of years ago, and everything was high. People were selling their cars for high, they were paying high. So it was yeah. all relative. But sadly, a lot of cars have come back. Some cars have come back fucking 30%. I mean, yeah. Some cars have come back 50%, depending on what. They were just had this massive spike, which we knew was not, a, you know, was not real, it was artificial. Yeah. I didn't care too much because I don't play with that market. So, you know, my clients, we didn't really get burnt. And, and when I did play a bit fringe, yeah, it didn't. So in saying that, yeah, a lot of these stuff has. And when you look at this W1, this W1, the new fucking McLaren. Yeah. I mean, why call it W1? I mean, we got the fucking HSV W1. I'm sure there was some <coughs> copyright oh. on W1 that would have had to ask the question. Doubt it. But to me, it looked like, mate, I don't know, you put an MC20 and now the new Stradale MC20s just come out. Oh, yeah. 
Who's gonna buy that? <laughs> really? <laughs> Too many cooks in the kitchen, I think. Come on, man. As I was saying to someone the other day, he goes, Oh, you know, I don't you know, I haven't got much to spend, you know, three, four hundred thousand. And I went, just stop. Yeah. Just just <laughs> just, just just fucking stop. Three, four hundred thousand. Are you fucking serious? That's a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, granted, we feel a bit, sometimes we feel immune. Not that we do, but I mean, the average car, what we say was about 350, 400, yeah. the average car. But not that we see that. But in saying that, you know, when someone says, oh, you know, I haven't yeah. got much to spend. 400 is not a mate, lot. Yeah, but look, you do the homework. You look what you can get for 400,000. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Look what you can get for 200,000. Yeah. Look what you can get for 100. Now, it all comes down to what you want, mm. but. But there's some fucking value. But no, I don't like any of these new fucking hyper supercars or anything. Yeah. They're a fucking waste. Of course way. they're going to sell them out. Of course they are. Mm-hmm. What they're going to be like secondhand yeah. is the thing. Yeah, I, I don't. The thing some is, will make money because don't forget, there's a few people that missed out. So they will pay overs, but only a few. Only a few. Oh, yeah, no. It'll not be, a lot. It'll be not a at all. For a yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think it's sad that us as car enthusiasts are caring less and less about. A lot honestly, of these brother, new cars. I, 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 honestly, I'm. Yeah. Does that say that we're becoming dinosaurs, no. or that the car market is no. going off the rails? T- t- the car market is going off the rails. I think they've just, they're, to me, mate, they're all fucking half looking the same. They start. You don't know the blurred lines between certain things, and you're like, mate. It, it, to me, you look at that new Lamborghini, the. The, the new Rev Welt. Rev, 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 I can't even say the fucking stupid name. And it's just like, oh, there's so many different points of view when you look at the car. It's got a bit of Hurricane style, yeah. STO y there, a bit of Kuntaji, a bit of. It's like, it's like Lamborghini just, just, just going for it because they can sell it and people will buy it. So yeah. They just go, you know what, we'll put a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this. Yeah. It's no real form and function, I believe to it like what the previous mm. model. Say to me, I would rather go back and buy a Musilago or a Diablo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're a kind of a thing to drive, a shit thing to drive. Well, it's not that they're a shit thing to drive. The car was designed to be driven in a certain manner, which is long, beautiful roads, yeah. windy roads, not in traffic or chap laps or, you know, just a, a short cruise. They're not built for that. The new ones are because they have to be that way because yeah. that's how our life is. Mm. But they lose also that essence. And I just think by making them loud and screaming and noisy and go very fast, it doesn't really make a difference today. It doesn't. It doesn't because that's not the reality. The noise I, think, I think Lambo's still doing a better job of making a car with a soul than Ferrari, McLaren, anyone Ferrari, else. Ferrari are starting to, I believe they're starting to it's lose bad. it. I really believe so. Yeah, it's bad. I, 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 I believe like the Roma, they just can't fucking give the Roma away. I'm not away. surprised. Yeah, which is sad, man. Yeah. I mean, it's sad the way they – but that's just, you know, that's what happens, man. The company gets so big, you know, it's got a, a lot of mouths to feed. It's got a lot of shareholders to yeah. represent and yeah. report to. And, yes, it's the most profitable brand in the world. But, you know, it, 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 I, I, I think, you know, the, it's lost its soul. From the purse saying that shouldn't have happened, I don't oh, think so. Yeah, there's a couple of recents from Ferrari that – Big questions. Anyway, so anyway, yeah, we'll no. keep moving. We'll keep moving. So the last thing I've got on here for latest news is that my racing season's over. We're all done for the year. Fucking, you mate, you fucking come up good considering you had some some frustrating situations outside your control. Yeah, well, I mean, we struggled with mechanical issues for almost every single round this year. Just That's shit. What that I mean, we and when you're on the pace, you're three of on them. The, pace. the first three of the year were all caused by the same one part, which was replaced brand new and we didn't know was faulty from the factory. So we replaced that part first, thinking that's what it was. The new brand new part that came faulty. from the manufacturer was already faulty. We didn't know. We started chasing other things other for things. six months. We replaced the engine in the car. And it was only when we went right back around and rechanged again this wow. brand new part that wow. the issue was fixed. And it was like, what the wow, heck? Mate. So That's yeah, crazy, crazy. Um, oh, and then look. and then and then obviously, so we fixed all that. Then we had the bend. Mm. Perfect. On for third race one. I know. It was um, great. Spun it. Fought from the back race yeah. two. Motor blows. 
And it's like, how bad can my luck get? So we had our last round at the new one raceway, yeah. which was Wakefield Park, for yeah. those who know, up in, in New South Wales. Great track, yeah. especially for, for us. Your, yeah. yeah, it's very well suited to our cars. So we've got the outright lap record wow, there now. Wow, fantastic. Which is when you do the conversion to what the lap record at the old Wakeful Park layout was, yeah, because it's now got two couple extra corners, 150 yep. metres of extra track, so you can't really compare them. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. there's been enough people that have done laps there to know roughly what the time difference is between the old Wakefield and the new one raceway, about one and a half to two seconds. Okay. And our lap record is less than two seconds away from what the yeah. old outright lap record was, which Fuck, was set by a half a million yeah. dollar time attack yeah. monster so it's we're really happy with that yeah, really happy good, with that it's a awesome first track. time around there too first time yeah yeah first time we literally had three practice sessions yeah. and four races so yeah that's good good for us yeah. loving it they've done a great job rebuilding that track and hopefully they don't have any more noise complaints that the bullshit that it got shut down because a couple of farmers are complaining and all this just crap um but it's so good to see them back so good to see them back um the only downside and it only affects us in the hyper races. It's fucking hot, isn't it? Is it, it is warm. It is 30 degrees today. Huh? 30 degrees today. Bullshit. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Was it really? Yeah, 30 degrees today. Yeah. Fuck off. Was it really? Mm. No way. Yeah, it was. It was warm. Yeah. yeah, so one raceway doesn't have a very long front straight, and then it is constantly <coughs> cornering. So for us, oh. you are hanging on to G's. For wow. Left or right for Just like constant. 90% of the lap. Yeah. So we were coming out of races with. Dead oh, arms covered in sweat. Nick it's, would be mate, fucking, yeah. such a workout. Yeah. There's just no rest. And we are flying around there, yeah. just absolutely hanging on to Yeah, the look, grouse. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Hard work. The other, couple, the other thing was... A couple of boys spun. There's a few boys that spun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's nice that they've got so much runoff there. Yeah. You can really good, sort of yeah. hammer it. It's um, forgiving. 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, even when there isn't asphalt runoff, there's no walls. It's just yeah. grass. So off you go. The noise. So they do have a decibel and it's on the run into the final set of corners, which we call the bowl. Yeah. And every single other category is hard on the brakes by the time they get to the noise meter. Oh, really? We were having issues because we don't brake. So every other category so is completely off the throttle. Yeah, but you're... They're fine. Wow. We're still wide open yeah. going past this decibel wow. meter. So we had some issues, but wow. uh, we managed to and that's make it got work. still pinned with the downforce. Mate, just fucking it's crazy. In. Yeah, that's crazy. Gross. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to next year. Wow, okay. Yeah. So we've got a couple of brand new sponsors. We're going to hunt a yeah. couple more sponsors. Yeah, we know. we've got um, some more on. And please, if you want to get involved, it's good fun. Come out to the tracks and it's great. Like I said, we've got some lovely people that have joined joined the joined the camp and there's some more to get on board and yeah. we're just sort of finalising. We want to finalise that over the next sort of month or so. Yeah, yeah. so we've got a budget. Um, we've got a budget for next year to go yeah. racing. And we've, so we've, we're sort of moving along and we still need a bit of you. Yeah, well, we're halfway there. We're halfway yeah. there. So yeah. big thank you Fantastic. to Perry from Muscle Car Warehouse. So the you guys new cats on board is, is Pears, Perry, Muscle yep. Car Warehouse. Love you, mate. Thank you. Stevie yep. from Alpine Motor Group. A high country automotive. Well, I know him as Alpine and I know it's high country, but... He's in Kuma and... Up near the racetrack we were just at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Toyota, Hyundai, Ford, Suzuki, no Suzuki, Subaru. I think he's, yeah, yeah Ford, Toyota, yeah. So he's in country New South Wales. Mm. So he's been a mate of mine for ages. So he's been good enough to get on board. We've got Luke. Lukey, Lukey Sturr, just yeah. like one of our dearest clients has really become family. We love them. They're just great people. I feel very bad. We haven't caught up. Everyone's been so fucking busy. But sustainable tree management. Yep, that's it. So Those are the big three for now. Yeah, so yes. he's on board. And if you need his stuff, he does all the tree planning of the councils and he does a lot of big projects. So they go out there and they check on the trees and, I don't know, do all the – yeah, anyways, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. pretty technical stuff with the stuff you need him to build. So yep. he's another good one on. So those are the three that have come on board. Yeah. We've got a couple of others we're talking to which should get on board in the next couple of weeks tops. So so if you yeah, are good. interested Please. in being a part of what's going on. Yeah, a lot of fun. Hit us up. Um, yeah, we've, And it's not ridiculous money it. too. It's not like no, I said, it's, it's not like <sighs> Very cheap. the budget is what we... Cheapest we, we, package is two and a half. Yeah, we, we, we would have spent more in his total budget on a race weekend down at Phillip Island on, on, on tyres. 
with yeah, night, yeah, with the yeah, nights, yeah. I'll do a whole year the, cheaper than you'll do one fucking event. It's, I mean, it's, it's yeah. that's what I mean. It's fantastic. Yeah, racing, such good value. It's for great me. racing, great exposure. Yeah. Now it's on TV and we're doing that. It's been yeah. really good. I mean, I felt very proud to see the the white you deer on the tail. Yeah. It was really good. The yeah. car stands out really good. When I was standing the on sponsors. the podium, yeah, mate, exactly. <laughs> it was just, it was great. Very good to be on the camera too. So no, it's good. So we'd love you to get on board and. Then we get involved in some of the events that we're going to be doing next year. Like I said, we just had to sort out a few things this year, which we have. We're doing some private events, which we've been doing. So if you're wanting to do a private car event, get in touch with Nico. We've had a few of the the, the person uh, the car clubs are coming through, which has been really nice. Yep. Had some lovely nights here. I think a couple of them want to do sort of have their Christmas break up uh, sort of yeah. thing here. Which yeah. So, you know, yeah, if you're planning on doing something, let us know. We might be able to work something out with you, definitely. 100%. So, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah. All right, so we'll get on to Car of the Week. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ, time is flying. Right. Fuck, it is the mm. black Porsche Carrera wide body. Oh, you mean the you mean the 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 seventy three? The one we photographed last yeah. week. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's because that's what we're talking about. That's yeah. that's a mad Well car. today, I mean, I thought that bloke was gonna buy it. But he, I don't want his fucking you. Okay, so You gotta tell the audience what it is. Okay, so this is a nineteen seventy three two point four litre. 911. Now, a lot of cars in the 70s and 80s we imported from UK, Europe, South US, Africa. South Africa, all various ones. And then they were upgraded to wide bodies. A lot of them were, as a lot of people know in the know back in the days, that a lot of cars were. And they changed them along the way, changed gearbox, changed a lot of things because no one knew like anything. Meant, yeah. They did it back then. 356 is very known for it. I mean, how many Ferraris would change colours because they wanted red, they couldn't get rid of the time. This is just shit that happened in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Yeah. It is what it is. A lot of cars have been preserved and obviously they're the ones with the premiums and they hold the value per se. And then there's cars that have been done really shit and then there's cars that have been done really well. Plus also, you know, even though it was expensive back in the day, it's still cheap relative to now. You know what I mean? Compared to when you look at inflation and everything like that. So some of these cars... So this car was bought out... It's a 73. It was bought out in 1980. So it's been here like forever. Where was it brought from? The US. So it came from California. So it was a dry car. So the car came out from the US. And then the gentleman that bought it out took it to a very well known like Porsche restorer, body build, uh, body build, coach work thing back in the day because he wanted a turbo. Couldn't get a turbo, wanted a turbo. They were too expensive, whatever the case may be. So he commissioned them to basically rebuild his car. So it not only got converted and done properly, it was also put into a steel body, which is rare because most of the cars back in the day were fiberglass, saved money, they did fiberglass bodies. So you see a lot of these cars were upgraded and there's a lot of cars from the 70s and 80s which were upgraded to a 964 look. Yeah. And there's a lot. And 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 they did that. Now they do the back dates for fuck's sake. You know, people used to throw rocks at them then when they were sort of forward dating the car yeah. sort of thing. And now they're... Fucking wanting to go back, date. So Crazy. you can't fucking win anyways. So the 964 was a really sort of good period. They were doing a lot of that. But these people, all they did was they wanted a nice black 930 look. So they did steel body. Um, they upgraded the engine from the 2.4 to a factory 3.2 litre Carrera. So it's a big horsepower engine. So basically the car's been built to look like an 84, 85 turbo body Carrera. Even though it's it's not, it's 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 been built that way. It's no different to someone going and commissioning a fucking uh, a, what do you call it? A, a a a like a a stinger in a way, but in a modern day. But you know, because at the end of the day, what's that? That's a nine six four, which has been totally customised yeah. in its own manner. The singer, yeah, yeah, in a sense, or a roof, or mm -hmm. they are, except that these weren't done by a big tuning company. They were yeah. done by. Yeah good people at the time that did did that. So this has been done a long time ago and the restoration was done you know, 30 odd years ago, long yeah. time ago, long time ago. So when you look at it and I got called about it and I'm, everyone knows what we're like here, everything is blue chip and it's, you know, it is what it is. But occasionally if something I think represents good value and it's done right and it's done tastefully and I represent it for what it is. I will take that car. And that's the thing for me. It's a it's a it's a three point two wide body for two point four money. Why would you not? If that car was a genuine eighty five Carrera turbo body coupe, that car would be 
$250,000. And what are we selling this one for? I'm about to put the ca- – we haven't even put the market yet because oh, it wasn't my fault. We hadn't done the fo- – you did the yeah, photos yeah. and we just we just finished it off. So it goes to market, I think, this evening. 130 grand. Value. Value. 130 grand. Yeah. Yeah, and I took it up the street. It's awesome. Mate, it's, it's got a fully rebuilt engine, yeah. gearbox. It's got the 915 out of it, which is – so it's basically, it's like a 231 horsepower Carrera with steel turbo body, factory sunroof, proper turbo bo- tail, not a fucking knockoff, a Value. proper turbo tail. Value. It's got period from the, I think he got them in the 90s, but he paid like five or six grand back then. Yeah. Come on, man. Fuck me. That's that's a lot of money, mate. You buy a fucking car. Well, you yeah. should buy a car for it now, but what yeah. I'm saying is, so... The, the wheels that are on it are like the period correct BBS Porsche style wheels. The car looks awesome. It looks gross, man. Like for 130 grand, like, come yeah, on. Yeah, it's amazing value. That's amazing value. So, yeah, that's that's definitely the car of the week. That's that's something you buy, you do nothing, enjoy it. Enjoy it. You know it. what? If anything, okay, because I'm, I'm critical and I'm, I am hard regardless of what it is. The only thing I'd probably do is, I actually like the BBS wheels on it. I'd probably just buy a set of <laughs> Futch wheels, turbo Futch wheels, and uh, put it on there. Done. You're done. Yeah. That's if you wanted to, but I actually yeah. like them. Of all the wheels, it could have had a lot of other shit wheels. But when I saw it, I went, are they, I do are they genuine? Like the and he goes, no, they're genuine. I went, fuck, they're worth a bit of money because yeah. they're grouse. You don't see them. Yeah. And they're in perfect order. They're staggered. Fills the guards out. Beautiful car, beautiful car. Are we doing a social post on that or something with photos and that? Yeah. It's the next one to go. Yeah, so watch out. I mean, I'm putting it to market. It goes to market tonight or tomorrow morning. I I say that all the time. I mean, it should be sold. I mean, you know, we've been blessed. We've had a very busy couple of weeks. What have we done differently? Nothing, nothing. But just persistence overcomes resistance. I don't know. Yeah. People just decided to make a decision realizing that yeah that car is the right car for them Market whatever. Flows. whatever and and things come in threes right as soon as one person decides yeah, they want exactly to buy. right and it's funny isn't it like with the warm weather now like that we've been getting yeah man fucking all of a sudden now we're getting people inquiring about fucking convertibles and blah 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 it's funny yeah. how it works but no so yeah good car yeah awesome yeah all right so questions from the audience oh okay yeah good yeah um, sweet so the first one we actually put up on the stories for you guys to respond to so we've got some audience answers to this question to good, also discuss. Good, good, cool. good, good. Let's like so, see what the opinions are. <coughs> our friends over at Bastion Property Group have asked, what are some affordable future classics for sub 100,000? Future classics. So cars that aren't yeah. right now. Well, I mean, it's hard to say because there's, there's future classics which are going to be future because they're going to continue to be classics in the future, which are classics now. Are there cars that you're saying they're off the radar that will be a classic in the future? Off their own and will be a classic in the future that you can buy That's right now what, for less than 100 grand. What, new or secondhand still? or doesn't no, matter. Just, hand, just hand, anything, anything. As long as it's not 60 years old. Because, yeah, you know, of course, yeah. Future classic. So I'll, I'll give you a couple because I've got a big list here. So first off, personal well, bias. Well, it's a big, big thing. Of what, what's your range? What's your choice? What's well, your like? Yeah, I'm, there's so many. There is so many. Yeah. So personal bias. I reckon an Elise, a Lotus Elise. Yeah, Sub 100 Future classic. 100%. No Nothing like that has ever been made, always, will ever be made. If you've got Elise to sell, nice original Elise, not fuck with. He nice wants it. Yeah, we've, we've, we've been fortunate we've grabbed hold of a couple. We sort of sold them on market, but I would like, I love them for stock. So if you have one, please contact Nico, contact me, contact us. We would like to see if we can buy or yeah. assist you in your yeah, Lotus. Anyway, so yeah, not going down in value yeah, great cars. Again. Great yeah. cars. The next one I had... R32 GTRs, because they are still the cheapest of the Skyline GTRs that you can get. I think you just stick to a fucking original Aussie car. That's it. Yeah? That's it. That's okay. me personally. There's just too much bastardized yeah. shit out there. There is a lot. And everyone lot. fucking buys an A-grade auction car from, from Japan. Japan. Yeah. They're all fucking A-grade. Yeah. Uh, you get this list of shit. I don't know if I'm bringing a fucking menu you don't know what it is. <laughs> their, 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 their service history is backwards. It's different to the way our yeah, books read. Yeah, right, okay. Because yep. I've seen a few of that stuff and I was, again, at Dutton's, I learned all this shit. I didn't yeah. realise. I went, fuck that, too hard. You know, I can get it because, you know, but if it came to Australia, oh, yeah, but it's value. Doesn't matter. Buy the Australian car. There you go. There's your buyer's advice on R32 GDRs. Just buy the Australian car. Oh, yeah, but there's a big difference in money. There's a reason for that. Yeah. 
There's a reason for that. Yeah. You buy an unmolested, totally original, not fuck with in any way. One of the original was it 100 or 150 original R32 GDRs yeah, right. in the burgundy, the yep. blue, or the, uh, the 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 grey that they came in. I've got a couple of clients that have got them just totally original, beautiful. They will be like anything. Always the first gen is always as the migration moves on, and there's yep. all these variety of models in between, and that generally the OG will always be stable. Yeah. The OG, the first gen of that particular lineup, yep. as it's had its transmissions and transformations and all the evolutions of it, the first gen will always. And if you look at certain model cars, they always will. And 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 you buy the most original, unfucked, untouched, just beautiful original car. At best, at best, maybe an exhaust, maybe, maybe. No suspension, nothing, maybe, no, I don't like, just the original wheels, yeah. that's what you stick with. Yeah, there you go. And and and, and that's it. Yeah, no, there that's it. R32, yeah. So here's a, here's a left ball one for you. I reckon Jag F-Type is going to be a future classic. Yeah, you and know what? And you can what? get them for sub 100. At the Again, a great car. A you unique car. One. Who else makes something like that with that much soul? Yeah, that's a fantastic car. And yeah. the V6 supercharged, mate, that's all you need. I mean, I love my V8, so I would get a V8 just as a can eater. But the V6 supercharged with the exhaust package in a convertible, actually, that is a convertible car because there's so much theatre mm-hmm. and there's so much sound and presence and yep. it, just, it just evolves you. Okay, granted, it's an auto, but... I think they did actually make manuals. We never got them here, We though. never got them. Ah, oh, shit. There you go. Yeah, n- yeah, I have a double look. I feel like I did see one. I was going to say, I stopped oh, no. and I went, I can't I remember. One? I know they're doing a four cylinder. What the fuck would you oh, do that? Yeah, no. So, why would you buy a four cylinder no. Mustang? No. Like, fuck I forgot off. that thing existed. Mate, we know who they were doing a four cylinder Mustang. Get the fuck out of here. What the hell would you buy a four cylinder Mustang? Eco Boost. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, that's stupid, anyways. So, no, that's, that's, yep. That's All right, have you got a suggestion? Under 100. Under 100. Right. Look. Now. Again, I'm I I probably go a bit more, but see, I, see that's the problem. I mean, it, there's there's look, I I think stuff like just original first gen cars, like you know, I see. But then it's also you've got to also ask the question. A future classic? Do you mean future classic also that you're going to make money on the car? Or you 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 buy something that's going to be just stable that you're not going to rip up, but yeah. you know you're not going to go and fucking it's not going to be worth fucking five hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that, that yeah, ain't yeah. going to happen. No. You know what I mean? So for me, a future classic is something that what I call some of these cars future classic to me is it's generational. Yes. Yeah. So I believe a lot of the inventory that we carry is generational. I do that on specific. So we've got. People in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and fucking 80s now we're doing some of some clients. But to me, that's generation. So when people walk in here at different ages, there's cars there that they all really appreciate. And that's usually yeah. a classic Benz, a classic Aston, a classic Ferrari. The new stuff is a bit more gaudy. Yeah. They don't, they're like, oh, yeah, no, oh, you know, look, everyone loves a supercar. Yeah. You just can't help that. It's just the yeah. fucking theatre and the commotion wow factor, that comes with yeah. it. The reality is a whole fucking different thing. But see, to me, you know, like just just a simple thing like a, you know, see, but the problem is they made so fucking many, but it's such a good car, like a fucking Magana RS Cup 250 or something yeah. or Trophy or. Yeah, I did actually think about that. You know, that's a great car. Yeah. Great car. Fucking cheap for what they were new. And buy a good original car and that's something that you can enjoy it's so much fun and you'll always get your money back mm. or you may get an incredible growth but fuck all this thing about trying to make money in the future on these cars you know yeah if you really want to speculate well then you got to get fucking serious yes yeah. you can buy some cars that are a bit under the radar but it's too hard yeah because everyone else is fucking trying to do the same fucking thing too yeah exactly right. i mean a classic mercedes you know like i think a, i think a good I think like 
a good 450 SLC, which is really older stuff, 70s and 80s, and they're cheap. If I could buy one, 20 grand, 25, 30 grand. Right. Now, they're bulletproof. Their engineering is amazing. But sadly, a lot of them have been neglected. But a really blue chip car mm. that you can buy relatively well priced and they're very reliable, you look after it. And, and you know, you will get capital appreciation and that is a future. It's a classic now. That's the thing. It's already classic. Yeah. But it will also be a future classic because that classic Mercedes, that 107 series, like you have 380 SLs, you have 560 yeah. SLs. This is just like a little bit longer version and they're a fixed coupe. Not the one we had here, that shit eat that was, yeah. I mean, it is shit eat because the guy left it in the barn and it's fucked. But they're a great car, but yeah. that one's fucked. But in saying that, there you go. You've got good ones, you've got bad ones. Yeah. But that's a beautiful car. They're very, they're, they're overlooked because people see the convertibles. And then the other car that I think I think is still, you know, I, I, I still think is, is, is great buying is, you know, SL55. I mean, you know, I agree. This this is an underrated car. People in no no. There are a few people that have done their homework and realised they're a special car. I mean, this car was with change with all the options under half, just under half a million dollars. Fastest auto convertible in the world at the time. They're bulletproof mechanicals. I mean, I'm a massive fan of them. Mm -hmm. I think they're undervalued. They've dropped to the stage at one stage. They dropped to like forty grand. Yeah. 45 grand, which is bullshit. That's yeah. 90% of its value. The market's stable, the bit better. We've had some premium cars, so they're premium money, mm -hmm. but they're the best of. It is yeah. what it is. You pay for the fucking best. Yeah, and, and people in 20 years' time with rose-tinted glasses will see the value. 100%. And, and the, the, you see that with a lot of what are current classics now, a lot of them have this trend of halfway through, you know, 20, 25 years into their life cycle, yep. they're just worthless. Uh, the yep. 250 GDO was the same. There's stories of people selling them for four, five, six grand, even though it was the 60s, 70s, 80s, but still sure. four, five, six grand for a 250 GDO. So yep. there's this common theme here of, yes. you know, almost uh, to answer this question, pick the car that everyone thinks is the shittest right now because that will be loved the most in 30 years' time. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> and Look, I think I think the cars that will give more of a visceral, more feeling when you get in, you smile, and that yeah. typical cliche of when you walk away from your car and if you didn't turn around and look at yeah. it, you bought the wrong car. Yeah. And that, mate, I do that when I look walk away from a Ute. So it doesn't matter. It's a love of cars. Mm. And I think, as I said, I mean, it's such a hard question to answer because there's, I think there's a lot of choice there, but it's also... You know, is it something you want to enjoy for yourself? So Lotus is fantastic. Yeah. Is it something you want to maybe enjoy with your family? So you buy yeah. something like a classic Range Rover. Yeah, there you go. See, I yeah. love my Range Rovers. I love my Range Rovers. And I've had a number of classics, 89 to 95. They went up at one stage. I mean, we sold the most fucking expensive one in the world, but it was also the lowest mileage and the best example. That last one that we had, and that was 150. But then, you know, you can buy them on there for 25 and 35, 40 that's a car that's you know something that's just something about a Range Rover you know yeah. what I mean I still think a a a nice original but see that's already a classic now I guess the Type R Civic you know the round light cars that we had like oh the, yeah you know, that, those ones from the 90s yeah, I agree I mean that's I a agree. great car yeah. well underneath R32 GDR I also put any top spec JDM icon yeah Evos S15 S2000s you know, S2000s right. S2000s already in the six figures what I remember test driving one for my second car. 20, 25 option. grand, mate. They were 20 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Idiot. I should have taken a loan on the spot. Anyway, I'll quickly rattle through the rest of my list and just tell me yes or no. Yeah. All right. Early 997 Carrera manual. Yes. Yes. Any Audi. S manual. Not nothing less. Yeah, okay. S manual, Carrera S manual. There you go. So there are some coupe. 997s. Okay. Coupe, not coupe Cabriolet. Manual not Cabriolet. S yeah. minimum. Yep, there you go. <coughs> Any Audi RS4, RS5 with the 4.2 litre V8. Correct. Original RS, RS4 B7 wagon with the Recaros. You can get them in manual too. No, no, all manual they were. They're all manual. They were all oh. manual. The, 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 the 4.2 uh, manual. Yeah, that manual. The next one was the DSG. So B7, 
must be a wagon, must have the Recaro seats, and no mods. Totally original. That's the one to bet. There you go. There you go. Next one. Controversial, but I think Mark V Supra. What's that one? The white one that we had. Oh. I think that's going to be a future classic. <laughs> Tristan, Tristan. <laughs> For our audience, Tristan, the cameraman Tristan just, goes, <laughs> Look, I actually had to stop for a sec. Look, I drove that car a couple of nights and went, fuck, this is actually a pretty good car. I have this over the BMW any day of the yeah. week. But that's, say, 85 grand. No, that's actually fucking more. We sold that for 85 grand. No. Yeah. No. What did we sell it for? Fucking Sub seven. Yeah, late sevens we sold that couple. But in 50, 60 years, the ones that still work. <laughs> will I hate be- to say it. You know what I reckon too? None of them will which last is, that long. Look, yeah, there's too much electronics on the fucking yeah, things, mate. That's yeah. the problem. And they'll just deteriorate. All those yeah. fucking celluloids and all that shit. In the yeah. You know what I think still is great value? A fucking 2.5 manual, even though I hang shit on them, a simple... 2.5 manual Boxster, totally original. Yeah, right. In silver <coughs> with Boxster red leather, classic twist wheels. Yeah. 15, right. wow. 20 grand. Great fun. Yeah. The, the fried, egg, fried egg headlights. Yeah, but eh? that's what saved fucking Porsche because yeah. by chance, <coughs> we got down there the soon to go on the market. The 25th anniversary, which is homage to the 1994 launch of the fucking thing. Monster. This one. Yeah. So this is actually the original launch colour of the silver with the red leather, and we've got one. There's only, I think, 20 or something in the country, but that's not a lot of money. I mean, fucking watches worth more. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's something that's a really good entry point that it's a Porsche. Yeah. Engineering's great. Buy an original car that's not been messed with. It's a lot of value. So You'll do never you, lose money. Do you think never. that in... 30 to 40 years' time, uh, a, what are they, 987, I think they were? A fried egg box star will be looked upon the same way that we currently look on a 70s 911 base model, just as a great classic car. I think just a nice, it's like a Mazda MX-5, but a German version. Yeah, that's it's what it basic, is. It's a basic, simple, point and shoot, well-balanced, mid-engine, it's not fuck loads of power. It's yeah. enough to get yourself into trouble. Mm-hmm. It's a free revving in a manual because the tip was shit. It's simple. Yeah. That will appeal to someone all the time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's a that's an appealing car. Yeah. Guy, girl, driver, not driver. No, it's just a simple, there's fuck all to go wrong with them. Yeah. That's a great car. Yeah. Would I buy one? Fucking no. I'd buy one for stock mm. if I had one, but I haven't found a good one. They're all fucked. Yeah. But if you find one, that's a good one. Yeah. There yeah. you go. So the last one on my list, and this could be controversial, mm-hmm. sub 100 grand, remember? Yeah. Future classic, yeah. I think, is what you can currently get, the V8 Vantage Aston Martins that you can still buy for sub 100 grand. Look, I think I there's think so many. right in the middle of that value dip. 60, that, 70 grand. That 20-year value dip. Yeah. I think in another 20 years' time, that yeah. is going to be looked back on as the the prettiest era of Aston Martin, the cars that everyone pictures, the cars from James you gotta Bond. Get a, look, you, I, you should, you really probably want a four point seven, which was the series two, right? I right. was actually blessed. Well, shows my age, but uh, when they were new, <coughs> when they first came out in two thousand and six, yep, I was at De Millions we were in Sydney, and funny enough, if you check, I was. That's when I had. Well, I was good mates with Michael Clark. The cricket captain at the time and Lara Bingle was his missus at the oh, time. Oh, just the Bingle story. Just the Bingle story, yeah. So yeah, okay. she had a Aston V8. So I'd sold them a few cars, Ferraris and Rangers, that sort of stuff. And I'll never forget it. Well, the call was there, it was with Ponting and that. And then there was this stress going on about the car got stolen. It was a friend of hers and all this fucking bullshit. Yeah. Anyways, and Michael's like, Shawnee, I need a fucking car. I need you to get rid of this fucking Aston. Go and get it for my joint in Bondi, blah, blah, blah. And Get out of my car, pressure be waiting and all that shit. So I sent our driver, swap, I had a brand new E63. So I sent that there. It was 06, 07. Yeah, 07. Uh, yeah, before GFC. Sent him there. He took my 63. Fuck, what was his name? 
Nick, Nick, Nick picked up the Ashton, brought it back. And you have a look, it's on the paper, I don't talk shit. There's me giving the fucking reporter a serve where she wrote there, I bingled Lara Bingle's car. Because yeah. she took it for a test drive. I knew her. She was reporters. We had cameras and that. I just thought, fuck, the wheel's fucked, mate. You, all you guys are fucking worried about this fucking chick's car because she was one of those things. That were the, they call them the Beckham and fucking yeah. whatever of Australia. I mean, yeah, yeah, I suppose. I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I didn't say that. They were just good people and did good business. Anyways, that manual V8, when I first drove it, what a car. But it has to be a manual and the manual's really clunky. Yep. Yep. But it's nice old school. The clutch is nice. Mm-hmm. The the Sportronic shit. Yes, you don't it get is. that. That's just a yeah. fucking shit gearbox. You got to get a manual and just a nice and tungsten grey, a classic yep. grey. Yeah. With either the the, the 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 red Bordeaux, which is just fucking Aston Martin, and a manual with the multi spoke wheels, simple, sixty seventy. Oh, I'm driving the moment. O six Bentley. O five O six Bentley GT Coupe. Really? Again, I was at the millions and they were new. I remember clients buying them. They were brand new, 550, 600. I've been driving that, that W12 the other day. I was driving that car <coughs> that we sold a few years ago. I bought it back. Silver, moonbeam silver with, with, with oyster leather. Fuck me. For 55, 60 grand, whatever it is, retail yeah. or 69 or whatever the fuck. Right? Anyway, somewhere around 60, 65 grand. What a car. That's a lot of car. Now, oh, it's a bit on. Fuck off, old man. It's, no, I mean, okay, I'm going to be 50 soon. But what I'm saying is it's it's just that's lost virtually 85% of, us, of its yeah. value. Yeah. You're not going to lose yeah. 400000 like the first bike. That's a car you could buy for under 70 grand. You rock up. Not that I do it for that, but I drive because I just love it. I mean, I can mm. drive it if I want. I'm fucking, yeah. If I want to be a wank, I just drive the 675. But it, it's, it's not that. It's just, fuck, this is a lot of car for the money. It is. It is. And you're driving it and it's just quiet and it's just the sound and the talk and you're going, fuck, it'll always be worth that. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's something that's just so classic. I mean, you think about it. That car came out in 2004. It was launched in, I think, 2002 or three. Yeah. Came out in 2004. We're in 2024. It's still fucking running. (laughs) When you think about it, it's still running, but it's just in a different yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. configuration, like the Porsche. It's got bigger and wider, but mm. a great car. That's another great car. There, there you go. Yeah, wow, so a lot of good suggestions. Right, Sleeps. we're running out of time. Yeah. So I'm going to quickly run through the four suggestions that we've got. Yeah. And then we're going to go. touch on our last topic. Go. So the four suggestions were C63 507. Yeah, I know. People would be saying I'm an AG man. I should have said that. And I did. It has to be a wagon and it has to be in the satin colour. And that's it. Not the black, not the white. It has to be the the, the satin, the the Magno Designio 507 wagon. That's the only one to buy. Don't buy a coupe, buy a wagon. There you go. There's your buying advice. Next one, 2001 MR2 Spider. Nah, not my thing. I don't, don't think so. Don't, nah, 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 I think that's just going to be a forgotten a car that's worth cares, nothing. Yeah. Clio V6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good car. Yeah, I think I think car. have a look at what the yeah. the Renault Eight, 5, five turbos have done. I mean, like, yeah, but they're already so classics. But yeah, yeah, no, that's a good car. Renault yeah. V six. We sold a couple of those in New Zealand. Good cars. Mm. Last one, Alpha four C. No fucking way. Don't think so. Nah. So I've so and here's here we quickly they're touch terrible. on this. So they should put so, a V six in it. Similar kind of car to an Elise in an aspect in a way. Yeah. Similar build numbers. But I agree with you. I do not yeah. think it is. If no one's, if you haven't driven one classic. and you're considering it, you need to drive it. You need to drive one because, look, I'm an Alpha man. I love my Alphas. I always have. I own a number of Alphas. I love the Ran Alpha. I love it. But the 4C is just stupid. There you go. I've never driven one. Now, probably when I run into a car club, someone at the Alpha 4C club will have a go. Oh, yeah. have a go, Shorty. <laughs> well, I'm just fucking stating my facts. You love it. I don't love it. There you but, go. No, they're not fun, and I don't think go. them as an investment. Okay, okay, no. interesting. All right, so we're going to get on to our episode topic, which we've almost run out of time for, but I need to touch on this yes. because this is cool, and I think this will probably go viral. So the title is, it's a patent in the US Patent Office. The title is Ford Patents Ads for Inter- Infotainment Screens. Huh? Ads for in, info, in-car infotainment screens. What do you mean by that? That means can, so people can advertise on the fucking infotainment on the screens in the car, pay for advertising in there? Yep. 
So, let me read it to you. I'm actually going to read this here because... That wouldn't be cheap. It is... It is crazy what Ford are doing. So this is a patent by Ford. This fucking Ford guy is on a fucking warpath, man. He's he's doing a lot of cool shit. I he's actually really doing, like it. Yeah. That GTD, I, yeah. Oh, mate, that's a fucking wicked animal. Car. Wicked mate, car. you need to bring that car here, Ford. Yeah. That GTD, just like fucking Chevrolet bought that car. C8 and the Z06. And, oh, the Z06 is the fucking car. That is a You cool don't need wicked. anything else, mate. That Z06... I've seen a couple of clients have got it now. Yeah. Oh, they're the, like the first badge. Yeah. Fuck, what a car. Nice. What a car. Nice. What a car. Okay, so let me read you the abstract for this yeah. patent. Yeah. This is word for word. Yeah. In vehicle advertisement presentation systems and methods are disclosed herein. So this is the start of the patent. Yeah. And example methods include determining vehicle information for a trip, the vehicle information including any one or more of current vehicle location, vehicle speed, a drive mode, traffic information, user information, including the route prediction for a trip. So if you haven't put in a destination, yeah. it will guess where you're going. Determining user preferences for advertisements from any audio signal inside the car or historic user data. So they are tracking everywhere you have been and will go. They are listening to everything you say uh, inside the be. car. And they are building a database yeah. of who you are. It's and basically an AI for your car. And how and it's to- like a fucking kit. But this is this is big data working out how to advertise to you on the screen inside your own vehicle. Yeah, yeah, okay, man. listening I mean, like, to you. Mark, that should be your only sanctuary. Times. Surely there yep. must be a menu there where you can click and say, "I am yep. not interested," and I do not solicitate mm-hmm. for any of your horse shit yep. that you're feeding me on my fucking infotainment yep. system. So here's the picture. I'll put this up on the podcast screen as well. I'm showing Sean. You can see there advertisement on the center infotainment That's screen. That's bullshit. Right? Come Crazy. on, Ford. You're going a long Crazy. way, mate. You're doing yeah. some good stuff. So already this Come looks on. bad. Already this looks bad. And then it gets worse. So I'm going to keep scrolling. Destination prediction. So you don't have to put in where you're going. I was going to say, the it's fact that you just said prediction means it's yep. fucking all the algorithms are listening Correct. to everything you're saying and it's picking yep. up your frequency of where you go yep. and then it'll pick up, oh, well, he's getting up in the morning. He's going to work. Yeah, exactly right. Here. So he's it literally says Saturday, he's going, going to, to gym, work or a shopping goes, mall. Yep, 100%. Go. Mate, fucking, mate, yep. from a come from Dan Nong, I'm fucking, I'm not that stupid. Yep. Fuck. But yep. it's, it's, that's bullshit. So the route indicates the type of roads that you're on, so streets or freeways, you know, and may have direct impact on the number of advertisements given to you. Yeah, because it's a short um, distance and you haven't got long. Correct, and you keep or how your fast you're road. going. Exactly right. Long yep. country roads. And we'll get on to eyes on the road Fuck. because because it gets crazy. I can't right? believe they're doing this. Yeah, it's mad. Mate, it's mad. that's sad, man. Yeah, Ford, yeah, yeah, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. I expected more yeah. from you. So speed prediction... I get if it's from fucking one of the Chinese fucking brands. Speed prediction that is indicative of high or low speeds for a trip may indicate a user's interaction watching the ads. So they're going, if if you're going 10 k's under, it's because you're watching the ads. Yeah, yeah. Or you're going to go over. What are you going to do? Alert the cops? Yeah, it's, well, Ford's doing something else in that. Come on, man. I mean, like, this is bullshit. Um, So. (laughs) They should just boycott it. So this this is where it gets crazy for me. When I read this at home, I literally went, "Holy shit!" And I was to come in and see what I was doing. Yeah. So, it, <laughs> Ford will determine a primary load from operating the vehicle. So by primary load, load they're talking about mental load. Huh? So the amount of concentration it requires someone to do the primary task of driving a vehicle. Okay. So they are determining how much concentration it requires someone to drive a vehicle. Okay. 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 Follow with me. Follow yeah, with me. Yeah. It then generates an estimate for the remaining budget of the secondary load. So, in other words, your remaining concentration that you have left after the initial after focusing on driving on the car. What? But then, what else is there? They are determining how much of that you have, and then using oh, and then using that to try and fucking to focus feed, for ads. to to decide how many ads how they can feed you. Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. Crazy, right? Yeah, Insane. And then if we scroll down to the next page, yeah. there's the formula. 
for Bullshit. concentration while driving. There you go. There's so the I'll put that up on the podcast so screen now so you can have a look. Computer and just this said, is a very, algorithms. very long mathematical algorithm that tells Ford how much concentration it requires you to drive a vehicle, how much spare concentration you have that you could be watching ads on the screen with, and then pumps out a number of how many ads per period of time they can feed you. That's just fucking Wild. bullshit. That's bullshit. Wild. That's bullshit. Crazy. But you must have to sign up to that. You wouldn't just automatically... I have no idea. There's no fucking There's way. There's no way you would sign up to this, right? Ads Fuck in your own that. car. Crazy. Fuck just that. That's just crazy. crap. So you much f- fucking accidents are going to happen because of mate, this? Mate, and, and this is where we get on the topic of in Australia... Even thinking about touching your phone is sent to jail immediately. In the US, they're like, let's just play ads for them while they're driving. What? What? It's just crazy. That's just bullshit. It's just otherworldly. There's no way. The fact that that pattern even exists makes me incredibly sad for humanity. That's actually quite sad because they're just trying to utilise any space and time that they can manipulate and capture yeah. and try and sell you something yeah. that they've obviously realised there's enough data there to show that we can translate and put this into a car yeah. and it could work. Wild. Wild. Like I said, Ford are doing some really good things. They've even made the statement the president's gone, I think it was Harold Ford Jr., the fifth or whatever the fuck. He's like, Ford, we are only going to build exciting cars and cool shit. Nice. Which is grouse. Yeah. And they are. Like some of the stuff they're doing is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's just... It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Tracking everywhere you're going, keeping an eye on your your location history, listening to what you're saying, you and your passengers inside the car. We will already anticipate where you're going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then listen to what you're talking about in the car and then feed you ads for places you're going to drive past or things that you might want. Just Hey, man, what do you feel like eating? Yeah. I don't know, not sure. There's a map up on the left. Fucking next to know all these fucking... Come on, man. It's worse on your phone. So all they've done is they've done the same shit that's on your phone as fucking now in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's wild. Yeah, obviously everyone knows when you're talking shit, then you start seeing shit on your fucking phone. It's it's the equation for me. We're mathematically determining how much You've actually got some fucking wild, some geniuses to go, go and sit in this office and come up with the formula and algorithms so we can determine, due to human behaviour, what the fuck we can sell these How many ads can we feed people? Yeah, Wild. Wild. And on that terrifying note, we are way over time. Well, it won't, be, won't, won't affect us because I won't be buying that this shit. This is US, US patent. So, oh, it'll come so, to yeah, Australia, um, of course. We're well, dumb we'll spark, see we're because, just... I mean, <laughs> we've got a whole bunch of laws that stop driver distractions like this. So I'd be very surprised if this came to Australia. But if this proves it can make a lot of money, oh, people bang. will bend laws like crazy. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So That's what it'll come down see. to. But, yes, thank you very much for joining right. us Lovely. on another week. It was a long we time. barely thank touched you. half the stuff I had for this episode. So... We're going to have another good one. Stay tuned. We'll see you next week in about 15. (laughs) 100%. Thank you again.